for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Bad Money Shots. Step in the Madness, as always. Got day four of the Madness 24 ratings releases. Today, we got tight ends and cornerbacks, uh, two of the more exciting positions. Um, but, you know, I don't have a... This is going to be a quicker video because I don't have a ton of problem with the actual order that these uh, guys came out. So I'm mostly going to be just doing reporting on this today. But as always, I've been doing this all week. I'm going to continue to tomorrow. I know tomorrow's quarterbacks. I don't know what the other position is going to be. I can't really think. I think they've covered, like, most of them. I guess I guess regular linebackers probably is the only other one left. Um, but, yeah, tomorrow Woo! I'm going to continue that. So if you guys want to see that, make sure to be a, a subscriber. Hit the like button, let me know in the comment section to stick around. Other than that, let's go and get right into it. I'm going to start off with uh, tight ends. We're going to do 11 to 20. I don't really have an issue with any of the uh, tight ends on this 11 to 20. That's why I was saying that this was probably going to be a faster video than normal. Uh, I would say the only person that is missing, I could see Dalton Kincaid, the first round pick from, the, uh, from uh, Buffalo, being on this list. But realistically, he'll probably be like a 75 or 76 when the game comes out. But other than that, uh, there's no real issues. I have no real issues with the list um, when it comes to 11 to 20. So let's just jump straight to the top 10 and take a look at what we got here. We got at the very top, we got Travis Kelsey clocking in at 99 once again, which I kind of expected. Um, you know, it feels like every day they're going to have a 99 overall person on the list which means tomorrow i'm expecting it probably be patrick mahomes but uh travis kelsey you know number one number two george kill i'd probably have george kill a little bit higher like i don't i definitely think he's number two but i might have him at like a 97 or 98 i don't know how much blocking comes into effect but some of these tight ends are really good blockers like him and dallas goddard and i don't feel like the blocking is really affecting their rating enough because i think to me i always thought that dallas goddard was the fourth best tight end i know i'm an eagles fan it's not a huge deal but i definitely think he's a better tight end if you include receiving and blocking i would have him over tj hawkinson but it's only a one point difference so i'm not really um that upset about it but tj hawkinson i think he definitely had a higher um output last year i don't think i mean you know goddard got hurt he missed a few games and Goddard's behind a couple of guys. He's got a few people in front of him when it comes to the pecking order of the ball, where Hawkinson really only has Justin Jefferson ahead of him. So, to me, yeah, he's going to put up a better stat, stat uh, line than Goddard based off of those factors. But I still think that when you when you factor in, in blocking, I think Goddard should be ahead. Of, he should be fourth, but that's not a huge deal. Kyle Pitts, though, I got an issue with Kyle Pitts. Why is Kyle Pitts rated an eighty-seven? After the year he had last year, now his rookie year he had a thousand yards. He only had, I think, only had one touchdown though, which is really weird to have a thousand yards and one touchdown. Last year he had two touchdowns, but he also only had 350 yards in 10 games. That's like 35 yards a game for a tight end. That's horrible. And 28 catches. That's like less than three a game. That's horrible. So to me, I mean, I know he didn't have a great quarterback last year, but he's not gonna have a great quarterback this year either. So to have him rated as the sixth best tight end. I mean, I'd definitely take Darren Waller over him. You know what I mean? I'd probably take Pat Frymouth over him based off of recent production as well. And Joku, Ingram, all of them. Like, they all outproduce Kyle Pitts. So why is Kyle Pitts, after 1,000-yard rookie season and then taking a huge step back last year, I can just rating didn't take a huge step back. So to me, him being the sixth best tight end is, is somewhat laughable. I wouldn't have him as, as sixth on my board. Uh, but, I mean, if, if you're basing off of potential and talent, okay. But you're not. You're, you're basing it off of the, the stats. Like, your your ratings point boost. I mean, you must really get a lot of ratings points for speed because that's probably his his best attribute, the thing he's done the most. Darren Waller is super fast, too. So I don't, I don't understand that one at all. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think about Kyle Pitts coming off of a, a year where he only had 28 catches, be, having an 87 overall. He should I mean, I don't know. If you want to have him in the top 10, I'd be fine with that. But all everybody on this list, outproduced him so i don't understand why he gets such a good um such a good you know rating off of just one good year let's go let's move on to cornerbacks i'm going to point out my eagle player of course um james bradbury at an 85 overall which i think is what his rating ended last year i don't know if his rating moved around much last year but he had the lowest quarterback rating allowed of any quarterback in the entire league last year i think he made all pro he didn't make pro bowl but he made all pro so for him to be 85 overall and like, you know, on the same level as guys like Patrick Peterson, who's just, I mean, he's okay. He's still a good player, but it's like he's hes, he's an older player. Like he, he really isn't, um, you know, I, I would take James Bradbury over anybody on this list with the exception of maybe AJ. I mean, I wouldn't take him over AJ Terrell or Trevon Diggs. 
Um, Trevon Diggs is definitely more of a playmaker. He's a dangerous guy on the field. I know people think I hate on Cowboys players, but Trevon Diggs is a really dangerous player. He's a guy, when you watch the Cowboys play, he's just all over the place. So I think you can make a, a, an argument for Trevon Diggs to be in the top 10 and A.J. Terrell to be in the top 10. Moving on to the top 10 cornerbacks. A couple of sl- small issues here. Jalen Ramsey at a 97. I just don't know if he's the number one cornerback anymore. I know watching him as in the Ra- with the Rams last year, he just did. I don't know. Maybe he was checked out. He might be reinvested now that he has a, a team that actually has like Super Bowl aspirations once again. So we might get to see a better version of Jalen Ramsey. But I don't know if he's the number one cornerback anymore. That's just how I feel. Watching him play last year, he just looked like he was. I don't know if he was dogging it or he just didn't care as much because the Rams were so bad. I don't know. But he didn't seem like the the same uh, Jalen Ramsey. But at the same time, I really don't know who I would take over him. I would say Patrick Sertan and Sauce Gardner are probably better cornerbacks, but you're going to have to wait a, a bit. I mean, they've played one in two years. It's hard to, to jump them up in rating that much that quickly to have them as the number one or you know cornerback in the game. Which is, like I said, it's kind of my issues. Like, some guys don't need much time at all. Like, Sauce Gardner only played one year. He's a 93 already. You know what I mean? It's like, how does a guy like that get... I mean, I know he's a good player. But how does he get such a quick ratings boost? And then guys like Jalen Hurts, who played last year. I'm sure Jalen Hurts tomorrow is going to be, like, in the, in the high 80s at best. <laughs> Coming off of, like, a near MVP season. That's just how... I just don't understand how some guys get such a, a, a quick ascension. And then other guys, you know, don't. And I, I think what it is in reality is Sauce Gardner's personality is really what's making him uh, a star. And it's like, just, I don't know, he's just passing all the stop signs, man. So that's that really doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Uh, but I don't have them as probably the one or two cornerback, even even with them not playing very long. Jair Alexander coming in number two is really cool, too, because I know last year, he I thought he lost his X Factor and stuff like that. For him to come back strong and, and come back as the number two cornerback is really cool because that, to me he is a really good cornerback. The only other issue I have here is, is probably Stefan Gilmore coming in at seven. I would have him as like an eighty nine. I don't or maybe a ninety at best. I don't know if he deserves to be seventh on the list. I know historically he's been a great cornerback, but he's on his third straight team or third different team in three years. Uh, I know the I mean the Panthers the ball uh, the, the Colts they weren't playing for anything but I feel like if he was still at a, such an elite level somebody would have held on to him and this is going to be the last year of his contract too in Dallas so he's going to have another team next year so I mean he's a mercenary now I don't feel like he's a top I don't feel like he should be the seventh best cornerback I feel like if he was that good somebody would would do a better job of uh, keeping him but he definitely belongs in the top ten I, I just feel like he should be a little bit lower I feel like Lattimore and Trey Davis White are just a little bit better based off of just the fact that they're just more in their prime. But uh, it's definitely a good player, so I'm not making a huge thing about that. So that's my take on the list. If you guys want to see tomorrow's quarterbacks, and like I said, linebackers, I think is left, uh, make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.